Behold, your born king. This week's main review is director Guy Ritchie's King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, starring Charlie Hunnam, Jude Law, and Eric Banner. Now, synopsis time, guys. Robbed of his birthright, Arthur comes up with a hard way in the back alleys of the city. But once he pulls the sword from the stone, that's one aspect that's really getting to me down so far. He is forced to acknowledge his true legacy, whether he likes it or not. Dow, there's a trailer in there somewhere. You want him to think big? Give him something big to think about. You wanted to prophesy. This is your prophecy. The man who pulled sword from stone. Behold, your born king. So, back here on Earth. Now, I was saying to you, I can't, I can't think of that moment when he pulls the sword out of the stone because David effing Beckham spoiled that <laughs> whole damn moment <laughs> to be fair, for me. Like I didn't, I didn't mind it. But I, I did hated at the exact it. same time. Like I was, I was kind of in the middle because he, he was trying to act like such a uh. bad. So for those of you who don't know, um, part part of the whole storyline is. Um, King Arthur's father, um, father's brother, his uncle, killed his yeah, mother Jude and Law. father. Jude yeah. Law's character killed his mother and father because he yeah. wanted to perform the dark arts. Yeah. Um, and Arthur got sent away, uh, was hidden away. Yeah. Now the stone, the sword and the stone, Excalibur re arises, and they're getting people of the same age to try and pull it out because the only bloodborne relative to the king can pull it out. Yeah. Charlie Hannon's character's like, you know what, screw this. Moves out of the way, pushes his way to the front of the queue yeah. to go and pull his sword. To be like, look, it's yeah. clearly not me. Let Can me I go off it. somewhere else? And David Beckham is there as like the head lead of this group of... Henchmen. Henchmen, yeah, let's say henchmen. Yeah. And he's, they've scarred up half his face. Um, and now he turns around and he's trying to be an absolute badass. He's trying to be like... Oh, like Charlie no, 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 no. Charlie no, Hannon no, comes no, no, out no. and goes... He literally goes, literally, literally, this is like this. So Charlie Hannon comes out and goes. Face, size of the face, and yeah. Charlie Hannon comes out and goes. What do you want me to do with this, or where do you want me with this? Well, I tell ya, if you go and put ten digits, one there and one there on the sword, and pull it out, and that was exactly how it sounded. And it was the most plastic <laughs> and horrid bit of acting I've ever seen in a Guy Ritchie film, ever. It was horrid. It was end of it review. It, it just felt. Like it was, you know, we've had a couple of drinks. No, it was like, it was, it was basically, been in a movie. it was Guy Ritchie going. Yeah, all right, I'll be in a movie. <laughs> it was Dave Beckham going, Guy, you got a, got a space for me in your next movie? And he's like, shh, I've already cast it. Yeah, sure, yeah. David, you can be this, you can be the, uh, the uh, like this really, really important yeah. character. He's the, um, um, uh, uh, lead henchman. Yeah, lead, lead, lead henchman. Yeah, 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 lead henchman, yeah. David. Yeah. Yeah. Should lead, do lead. that. Oh, lead. really? Yeah. Um, cool. Um, We've got to mean you up a little bit, though. Do you want Sir Alex to throw a boot on my head again? Nah, 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 nah. We'll just, we'll just prosthetic half yeah. your face. We'll make you look yeah. real badass. You'll look like yeah. an absolute oh hero. Yeah. yeah, I mean, literally, that's that ruined it for me because if you think about the, the the story of King Arthur, leading all the way up to that point, I was kind of in, I was interested. See, you can't look at the film like a standard. Like backstory to King Arthur. This you is can't. this is what I learned real early on in this movie. It's like, which is why I kind of enjoyed yeah. it a little bit. It was kind of oh my god. <laughs> it was it was no no. You you'll get this when I say it. <sighs> there was a part in it which had it was it was lock stock and two smoking barrels. Oh, it was it was it was in, lock stock. There, there's these snatched, parts. There's these yeah. parts where Charlie Hannon's character or Arthur is around and he's like, look at back scratch and look at Johnny Two Fingers or yeah. whatever. <laughs> and they started talking about how they made this heist go on, and, and it with was the so, Vikings, yeah, yeah with was, the yeah. Vikings, and it was so lock stock. And I was like, to be fair, you've kind of changed it up a bit. You've made it a British gangster movie in King Arthur's King time, Ar in Camelot, and it actually it actually worked quite nicely. I liked it, and there was and, a couple of bits that were shot yeah. the same as lock stock, like when they're running through the streets. There's like cameras on their chest. The, different moments, yeah, in the different scenes, and it, it looked really, really good and, and entertaining. I didn't take it too seriously at that point. I, as soon as I knew David Beckham was in it, I wasn't going to take it too serious. Um, 
my first thoughts though, when when the starting scene comes on, is yeah. there's this giant warlock and he's riding these elephants in Lord battle. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Straight off. I was, I was, like, like, I was like, no. I thought, no. I thought, I was, I was literally like, and you said about falling asleep. As soon as it come off, and then the massive elephants were yeah. going, and they had the temples on the on the elephants. Yeah. I was like. I've seen oh, this before. Uh, this is Mordor all over again. What yeah. the hell are and we the, doing? The, the fact, the worst thing about it was, the bad guy is building a tower, and at the top of the tower, when it's complete, or when something's going on, yeah. it lights up orange. Yeah. So it's like, you t are you trying to tell me you want you want the next Lord of the Rings job or something? Yeah, you're trying to tell... Well, we know he's not going to do Lord of the Rings, because he's going to go and abuse Aladdin now for Disney. Uh, um, so we've got all that That would be interesting. Yeah. Get a cockney, cockney <laughs> Aladdin. All right, guys, so what we're going to do is we're going to go have some fish and chips, and then we're going to go break into this bank down the road. Then we're going to run in, we're yeah. going to batter Johnny over the head. All right, we're going to steal this lamp, and right. we're going to get it to the geezer down the road for a fiver. Cool. <laughs> now, you know Tony Tiptoes? He went down there, and he kind of said, no. Look, you know who would be absolutely great to play Aladdin? Finney Jones. Finney Jones. I'm putting it out. He's already been booked. David Beckham. He's <laughs> David, Beckham. <laughs> David Beckham's already got his cameo booked. Oh, anyway. Yeah. No, I, I, we're going To be fair, piece. I quite enjoyed Charlie Hannum's character. Charlie Hannum was it. brilliant as King Arthur. Yeah. I love the part. So there's a couple of things that I really, really loved. I love the way it worked when Excalibur was active. So basically for, for you to make, yeah. to unleash the power of Excalibur, you had to hold it with two hands. Yeah. Um... And it kind of like activated it. And it was like, it was nice to see like the kind of sword light up and then his eyes like yeah, went. Yeah, the eyes grew with yeah, the power. Yeah, that was good. Like I like that whole, the mage behind it and stuff like that. And it really, it was a darker touch onto Merlin and stuff and uh, everything like that. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed like the way he fought with Excalibur. Yeah. So when, you only got to see it twice. Well, one and a half times, which is really disappointing because I wanted to see it more. Yeah. But his, when he is fighting with Excalibur, like Everything in, slows down. Yeah, have you ever it? seen Immortals? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, like in Immortals, bang, 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 Charlie's bang. the only one moving fast, but everything yeah. else is slow motion. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Um, I enjoyed the Reaper. I call him the Reaper. I don't know what he was called. Basically, Jude Law's character, when he, he summons it. He looked stunning, didn't he? He looked badass he and looked amazing. Mad. And until the end, until you, right at the end that you find out it's Jude Law. So basically what happens is Jude Law's character, he has, he's part of the Dark Arts and there's this woman in the lake um, and she's like a giant squid she's thing. She's like a serpent, yeah. isn't she? In a sense. And you have to kill someone you love, yeah. and she'll um, turn you into like this reaper. Yeah, give you more this black insanely dark strong dark reaper. Yeah. Um, so at the start, to kill his brother or the, the king Arthur, uh, Arthur's dad, he kills his wife. Yeah. Then right at the end, to kill Arthur, he kills his daughter. And he turns to his reaper, and this reaper looked awesome. His he was so fast, he was so strong. His cape was like not flames, but it was like deteriorating. Yeah. It looked really, it, it looked really so nice. Good. And oh. the the battle right at the end between Arthur and the reaper was really, really good. And I I actually really enjoyed that. So you get props for that. See, the thing with this film that got me is the story went from being really on point and really good and then had the lock stock moments and kind of brought like heartiness to it to then losing its sense of direction yeah. and I was kind of sitting there and that's why I got bored with it because yeah. I was like Kit, like this is not a Guy Ritchie film this is a studio film with no, Guy be, Ritchie kind fair, of directing it I thought it actually was a Guy Ritchie film because it reminded me quite a lot of Sherlock and stuff like that and I think what the, what the issues were is he skimped on the details and there were certain things that I wanted to see more of like when he went on to the into the Darklands yeah exactly yeah in a good way he kind of summarised it down he crushed it down and moved on with it which was fine um, I like the assassination attempt so there's an assassination attempt in the um, the main square where Charlie was raised yeah. Uh, yeah. where Arthur was raised um, and there's like battle scenes throughout the city and stuff like that and that works really really well um but yeah, there were points where you just you kind of lost the storyline, or you kind of got derailed a little bit, and then you had to pick yourself back yeah, onto you did. it. It was kind of it was kind of like it was kind of like he would get you to a moment, and you'd be like, "Wow, yeah," and then he'd be like, "We're gonna start again," and then you'd be like, "Oh," and then like you'd build yourself up again. Then the story would drop off, and you were kind of like, "Don't keep picking me up and dropping me off. Like keep me at that point and that momentum where I'm just like, yes, 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 yes," and then get me to that point where everything's kicking off and we see stuff but visually this film it was so good i remember listening to joe rogan's podcast um and guy ritchie was on there and guy ritchie had said on there i'm you know i, I love i'm attention to detail i you know i i'm a storyteller i will always tell a good story and i'm like oh, with this one i'm like 
I get what you're doing with this story, but I didn't like the drop-off points. I didn't like when you was, it was like reading a book. You'd read the chapter and it gets so good and then you'd be dropped back and you'd start again. You'd be so good and you'd drop back yeah. and then you'd have a good finale. I didn't like that aspect. Um, the lock stock moments I thought were really good. See, I thought they the were Vikings, really clever. The Vikings were kind of like the Russians in Snatch, which that's yeah, what I Yeah, that's liked. exactly that's what I mean. Yeah. It, it was kind of good to see that gangsterness yeah, it was. in it. Yeah, and that's what I liked about it. Uh, in that aspect, the story just the story just really wasn't it wasn't a hundred percent solid. And I think with guys' films, you're kind of now going, we do like a good story and we do like a good twist. And I get where you're coming from with your other films, but this one, I don't know. I think it was probably too studio driven. Um, you know, he he says he said as well in this interview he had with Joe Rogan. I keep saying about it, but he said in this interview with Joe Rogan that he was going for. St- for slots like so the studios would be like this slot and that slot and all different things like that you know so if they'd say king arthur's gonna have a summer 2017 slot he'd be like now he'd be like yeah so that's why he's now taken on aladdin because they've got you're gonna get prime time in either a december or a summer so he's like i'll, I'll do take it. it yeah so that's where he's at, at the moment even though he's like i just want to be a you know story maker and make good films I think we've had the best out of Guy Ritchie but there may be something more to come he might pull off Aladdin it might be lock stock and two smoking Aladdins you never know but (laughs) but you never know but with this film like costumes absolutely spot on love the costumes Um, he made he made he made the contrast between Judor's character and Charlie's character look really really good exactly and that's what I loved about it Um, he just made you he made you feel immersed in the world but the kind of whole touch on Lord of the Rings, I was a bit lost. Yeah, the, the Lord of the Rings influence yeah. was bad. I did not like that at no. all. Um, yeah. I'd, it was bad. But at the end of the day, it was, it, was a, it was a film where you could sit down, relax, enjoy it, and then get to the moments which you like, and then, you Pick, know, it, pick it out. Um, Jude Law, I thought he was good. I um, thought he was good. He had his moments. He had yeah. his moments. Eric Banner in the beginning. Very I sh- thought he was good as yeah, well. Yeah, very good. It was like a cameo, really, for him. I thought that was really good. Uh, Charlie, solid. Uh, the kind of... There's other characters... See, that's, that's why Charlie worked so well, is because yeah. he didn't have to put on... Um, he didn't have to put on any kind of accent. No, he didn't, no. He was kind of like, you know, I'm on it. Yeah, and this is what I'm going to be. I am King Arthur. I am going to start off from nothing and be well, that's, I think that's where the gangster fit kind of helps him as well, yeah. though. Because it was gangster, he was allowed to use his Cockney accent, and it was just yeah. like, yeah, that works really, really yeah, well. I like it. So, uh, let's wrap this up, Dale. Let's talk about, um, you know, just summaries. So, let's summary. go summary. Gosh. Okay. So, in a box shell. I'll, right, I'll give you my, so my plus points. I love the go. parts when they fought with Excalibur. I yeah. love the Reaper concept art. Uh, I love the yeah. costumes. Yeah. My dislikes. Um, I dislike the fact that, it, like you said, it was on the rails, off yeah. the rails, on the rails, off the rails. Yeah. Um, actually, I'll tell you that. But I also love the, the gangster element of it. I found that quite entertaining yeah. and funny. <laughs> and a little bit unique. Um yeah so the on the rails off the rails kind of uh, yeah. put me off uh, I feel that uh, you, like you said you yeah. can feel the studio's hand in it you can kind of yeah. see where it's taking it away yeah. from him exactly, yeah. a tiny bit Yeah. Um, but yeah I mean, plus sides for me. Did like the gangster element. I love the uh, ensemble cast around um, yeah. Charlie and Jude Law and, and Eric because even though Eric had a little part, it was still pivotal yeah. uh, to the story. Um, costumes yeah. were brilliant. Yeah. The settings were brilliant. Photography was Guy Ritchie down to a T. Um, you know, negative points. Um, like you said, the uh, you could tell there was studio involvement. Yeah. You could tell that. You know, he was trying to just get the film done and out there in certain aspects. Uh, the story was in and out. Um, and, David Beckham. And David Beckham. Oh, please, God. Um, I didn't like that at all. Great footballer. Well, he's not even a great footballer. He could never tackle to save his life. Um, but apart from that, um, that's about it, really. Yeah. So there's the positives. There's the things. I, I'm ready to score yeah, this. Yeah, score it. Let's wrap um, it up. I'm going to go first. Yeah. I'm going to give this a solid six. Yeah, that's fine. I'm happy with I that. completely agree with you. I, I'd say solid six. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe a little bit less because I'll probably enjoy Pacific Rim a little bit more than this. But um, yeah. No, I, I could see. I could see me going and watching this again and going. Oh, I kind of. I kind you of learned, really get like a bit more from it. Yeah, yeah I enjoyed exactly. it. Yeah. Um, definitely, I enjoyed it more than Aliens. So I'm happy with that. Um, <laughs> okay. Like that. So King Arthur, The Legend of the Sword, six. 
So that's a 6 out of 10 here for King Arthur, guys. Go and catch that at your local cinema at your peril. Right, so let's get on to um, competition time, Dan. Competition time! So we're going to get on to competition time, and basically, um, I reckon we should start off with last week's winner. This week, come on, go for it. So this week's winner from Alien Covenant. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very simple. Um, right. Waiting for it to load. We do this live. Do we do it worry. live, yeah. We are looking. We that do. was literally looking right. at his phone. So the question page. was, name Sigourney Weaver's character in the original Alien franchise. And the winner, please. So the winner was... Da, 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 da. Go. Paul Kitchener. There you go, Paul Kitchener. You have won that beautiful alien pop. Um, get in touch with us. All you've got to do is just say hi, and we'll be in touch with you. I'll message um, you. Do not worry. Yeah. I'll let you know. I'll be like, hi. Hey, you won man. last week's competition. Can we have your details so we can send it to you, please? Exactly. But I reckon, do you know what? It's time to just get on to this this week. Yeah, this right? week's one. And this week's is just... We, we, we continue it. So there's continue. four parts of this crossover. And we yeah. have given away parts one and two so far. So we are now giving away part number three of the bottom crossover, which is Batman issue 22 with an Yay. awesome cover. Yeah, well, that is you, awesome. If you want to know why Batman has red, and there's actually Bruce Wayne... And I'm not going to give away who the other person is on the floor. You have to read the comic. It is awesome. Such, such a good story arc. Such a good storyline. <laughs> so, it's very, very simple for your chance to win this awesome comic. Or add it to your collection if you're one of our previous winners, like uh, Rashid Koya. And the person, uh, Rachel, that won issue one or issue 21. Yeah, yeah she did. Very, yeah, she very did. simple. She did. What is the name of King Arthur's legendary sword? Oh, easy! I'm not even giving you a clue for this one because if you really? don't get it right, no, because if you don't get that right, jog on. Really? Yeah, really. Really? Yes. Shut up. Get on with it. Really? So, <laughs> to get this comment, to win this comment, and have yeah, a chance to win this comment, all you have to do is what is the name of King Arthur's legendary sword? And you can win this comment, guys. It's awesome. We're going to carry on with this until I suppose the story arc ends. Is that what the plan yep. is, Dale? So, yeah, you can win the whole entire story arc if you keep answering these questions right. All right. Or if you don't get any pieces of it, or you only get one of the four, just go to Limited Edition Comics. Discount code KING, all capitals, 2017. Put in discount code, bang, bosh, done. Give back to win you it. guys. Easy. That's what we do here on the weekend buzz. So, we've had the competition, guys. Now, let's get on to next week. So, what are we watching next so, week? So, next week, our rewind is going to be Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. Uh, then we'll bring you five new news stories. Yeah. Well, our main movie review of next week is going to be Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead yeah. Man, Tell No Tales. Now, I know they've changed this to like Salazar's, Salazar's Curse Reven or Revenge. Revenge, Revenge. Salazar's like Revenge. That, yeah, yeah. Who cares? Dead Man, Tell No Tales is better. Um, now, the only issue we're going to have with this is me and Tony are going to be at MCM London Comic Con, which we hope you guys oh. are too. We have the live yeah. stream going on. If you can't join us, we will have loads of giveaways, uh, as always. So join us for that right here on the MYM Buzz YouTube page. Nowhere else to go. You see all of our interviews. That's coming through with Donnie Yen. We've got four of the original Power Rangers. I mean, bad Vern ass. Troyer. Vern Troyer. Lou Ferrigno, the original Hulk. Yeah, oh! Summer Gal from Firefly. Oh. I mean, come on. It's going to be awesome. If you can't make it down there, <sighs> but you can make it to your laptop or your phone or your digital device, YouTube is everywhere. Check out MYM Buzz YouTube page. We'll have loads to give away to you guys as well, so you're always going to be winning. And you can see this mug. And also, we've got Tambi as well, guys. So you can check everything out on this live stream, which is going to be happening in a few weeks' time. Or is it a few Wait. weeks? It's a week time it's now, isn't week. it? Wow. It's a week today. See, I'm thinking two weeks week behind. Today. Well, a week today, I've got to be down there setting up. Well done, Dow. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, that's enough about work. Um, this is fun. Um, so, yeah, basically, next week is the new Pirates of the Caribbean. We're going to rewind with the original Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, I've got a quick joke. No. Why are pirates called pirates? Oh, dear good God. Because they are. Tony is sacked. And on Sweet. that note, guys, that's it from us here at the Weekend Buzz. We can't wait to show you what we're going to be getting up to at Con, as well as reviewing that film next week, Pirates of the Caribbean. So, guys, stay fresh. We'll see you soon. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Behold, your born king.